Hey guys, this will be video one for how to design build a Hunter and Mahogany Sparkle Top Flying V. And uh, this guitar is, this guitar, I just sold it and I'm, and I'm about to ship it here momentarily. But I wanted to take advantage of the fact that it was still in my possession so that I could do this brief video and show you what I'm about to build. Now, this guitar uh, was in a pretty uh, detailed series where I showed you exactly how you could uh, use uh, older aged woods and uh, assemble them and what you could achieve by doing doing so. Now, I've got the control cover. I think it's, yeah, I, I shot one more coat of lacquer on it this morning, so I'm letting this dry, but this control cover you know, obviously we'll, we'll go right here, but I still got a little bit of finished work to do on that to get it ready. And I'm literally uh, in the midnight hour here getting that prepped. So, but long story short, uh, the guitar I'll be building is going to be identical to this. And I say the guitar, I'm actually going to be building two. But uh, the guitar that I will be building, the two guitars that I will be building will be uh, both Hunter and Mahogany. One will be a hollow body uh, per jazz guitar specs, and we'll cover this stuff later on, but I've built uh, quite a few jazz guitars, and uh, I'm fairly confident in that, especially the big body stuff. But nonetheless, uh, we'll be building it um, fairly uh, close to identical to this, uh, but I'll be offering different pickup configurations and uh, different sparkle tops as well. And then uh, I do like this three control layout. That's going to be standard. So I don't really want to deviate from that because it's it, this is very much a complimentary guitar of the 50s era Karina uh, specs, you know, with the softer shoulder, with the flatter shoulders, although mine is definitely very much different from that. It's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more modernized, but nonetheless, uh, one thing I do want to cover, make sure that this gets gets picked up in the camera. This is a design that I came up with so that you could plug the uh, guitar cord in, the, the patch cord in, I mean the, uh, the cable in like this, and then put it beneath your strap. And it makes for a much cleaner guitar if you're a performer and you're going into a wireless system. I've never seen anyone do this on a Flying V. But uh, I'll show you how that's done, and uh, it's just so, so efficient, and uh, it is what it is. Let me, let me lay that down briefly. But nonetheless, I know I'm not going to go into any details, excuse me, about this guitar and how, how I went about building it. If you want to see how this one was built, just check out that video series, How to Design Build. A flying V, and I went into fairly mind-numbing detail about uh, the whole build process and uh, what it took to, to pull this off. A uh, great little project. This guitar sounds absolutely insane. It's just so amazing how articulate it is. It has a, a 1800s uh, antique pine cap on top of a poplar body. And uh, poplar is a phenomenal wood for a very centered uh, mid-range. But uh, we'll cover that stuff later on. But nonetheless, with this control cavity, the way I've designed this, you're able to do uh, any configuration you want. We'll, you know, let your, let your mind run with that one. But in these, this location right here, you're able to come in, obviously that being your three-way, you can pick up uh, basically three more locations to do uh, DPDT switching, either kill switching or you could do one DPDT that controls both pups, or you could do two DPDTs and and and, 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 and you know and treat them separately. Uh, one of the flying V's that I built a couple of years ago was stereo. It was insane. It went to Texas, but a uh, really cool design and turned out really well. But in other words, with the stereo option, that allows you to come, this control cavity gives you the room to do more uh, electronics work. So, all right, so what do I need to briefly cover here so I can end this video within just five or 10 minutes? Uh, the main thing I will be doing is, uh, let me look at my point list and I'll just, I'll just read it off. Uh, I'm going to build one uh, gold sparkle, okay? And the gold sparkle flying V is most likely, the body's already roughed out. It's on. It's in the other side of the shop. 
but it's going to be a hollow body basically and it will have parallel bracing and I most likely will treat it like a treble braced guitar like the uh, 60s, uh, 50s and 60s uh, Gretsch big hollow bodies like the Brian Setzer guitar that he, he, he played and uh, so that's going to be the gold one and it's going to receive a, a USA B5 Bixby across a, a Tone Pros uh, TPR6, you know, the, the roller, um, uh, Tone Pros Bridge. It's like the, the Tunematic with, with roller saddles. And uh, it will receive just a bone nut and or a tusk nut, all the tus although the tusk nut on the, this guitar was a little bit too bright on the last V. I might tone it down and go brass. Brass is a is a more dynamic uh, uh, nut. And the specs will be 100 and lower. Uh, that one will most likely have a 100 and cap, but it may have the uh, 1800s antique pine uh, cap, which will be more along the lines of a jazz guitar. It will receive a rosewood fretboard, a uh, 100 mahogany neck. I'm sorry, that one will receive a maple neck, uh, basically like a custom built maple neck that I build these necks as well. And it'll have a 17 degree pitch headstock. And it'll very, very likely have the uh, uh, Spurzel tuners, which I love. It's excellent. I've run the Spurzels on all of my big body jazz guitars, all of my small body jazz guitars, and with just phenomenal success. So uh, the, obviously this guitar being far more modern, uh, uh, it is what it is, but uh, that, that the gold sparkle will be more along the lines of kind of more a complementary of like the Gretsch-esque designs, okay? And then the other one that I build will be, uh, I mentioned the, the, the gold one will have parallel bracing. You, you could do X bracing in there, but it's kind of unnecessary in this design. You're not really, it's not a concert style, you know, classical and or acoustic or, and, and or big body jazz guitar. So the parallel bracing is very very safe and very predictable as far as tone. But the crimson guitar that I'm going to be building, uh, it will uh, be a solid Honduran mahogany lower. Well, the, the, the whole guitar will be solid Honduran mahogany. Uh, I may build it like a, a, a 50s Les Paul or like a Les Paul where it has a Honduran mahogany cap as well. And then that would allow me to do internal routing, but I don't think so. Odds are it's just going to be a solid hundred and mahogany body, and then I'll route accordingly. So, because I do not do a, a um, top routing, I love the fact of the really beautiful, simple. Uh, well, you've already seen it, but I love the fact of the really beautiful, clean um, work here, and not loading it up with uh, pit guards because you know we want to see the sparkle. And by putting the the output jack here. That even gives you more uh, more real estate here to admire and to flash around on stage if you're a performer. So anyway, uh, all that will be done in the back. And to get back on point about the, the crimson guitar, it, uh, let me cover it very quickly again. It'll be a Honduran, solid Honduran mahogany body with the Delmar. Uh, this, this drum rack is from the uh, 60s. I bought this from the estate of... Uh, of a uh, of an old school musician that had a ton of old fifties and sixties Fender guitars, Gibson, you name it. He had a whole bunch of like old old bridges, and uh, he had a bunch of Delmar drum wrap. I bought every bit of it, and uh, so I was fortunate to to find that. So this this Delmar is probably from the sixties or seventies. Uh, not really certain. This may be a little bit newer. It has a little bit smoother surface but they are the same thickness they're they're fairly thick so back to the back to the crimson one solid hunter and mahogany body and guess what it'll have it'll have a solid hunter and mahogany neck with a 17 degree pitch headstock with my headstock profile which is basically five percent scaled down from the Karina um, the traditional 50s flying V and then that one will receive the, the Gabon ebony neck uh, I have a bunch of Gabon Ebony, but odds are it will probably just come from Stuart McDonald, and it will uh, it'll look just like this. Uh, you really can't justify buying this wood raw and then machining it, you know, doing all this stuff. Uh, this, these, these end up being around 70 bucks, which is an extremely fair deal. And 
So it, most likely it'll, it'll have the GABA on ebony fretboard. Well, I say most likely. The crimson will, will have the GABA on ebony fretboard. Per Stuart, I mean, uh, per, uh, uh, yeah, per Stuart McDonald uh, production. Uh, let me briefly change gears here, and I'm just going to push this guitar to the side a little bit and show you some of the other options I'm going to do. Uh, the, the gold sparkle, uh, I'm going to be using these uh, uh, 50s. Uh, this is a, the authentic Stuart McDonald uh, 50s uh, Les Paul kit. I have the whole kit. I bought everything. The carving, you name it. Anything you could buy for, for, the, for the 50s Les Paul, I picked it up. And what does this do? This allows me to do a center line that if I want to turn this template into a flying V, you know, it's as easy as that. Obviously, you just, you know, in other words, I'm just working off a center line so that I can capture these locations of these two humbuckers and then uh, these uh, bridge locations and stuff like that. Obviously, the, the neck placement location would vary slightly right in right in here well, I got it backwards uh, right in right in this location but we'll cover that stuff but nonetheless I'm going to be using Stuart McDonald Les Paul templates to build the center line of both of these uh, guitars both sparkles the crimson and the, the gold but the gold and the the crimson sparkle V will get the uh, traditional humbucker route and I will be doing the long leg stepped in the neck but the uh I'm sorry, let me finish the crimson. And then also the crimson guitar, it'll get all of my control layout designed here, but then it will very likely just get the traditional ABR1 bridge with the tailpiece. I'll, I'll cover that later on. I don't really care for the through body design, but I may do that if someone requests that, uh, uh, to, if, you know, when they, when they decide to consider purchasing it. Uh, but the, the gold one, the gold one is most likely going to get the P90. Oh, I got that upside down. The gold one will most likely get the P90 bridge because this is a specific Stuart McDonald template, obviously, to transition from. Let me, let me, let me slow down. I'll show you something that's really cool if you're considering doing this. Uh, if you want to build this guitar to capture the 55, 56, 50, uh, I, I, I gotta, I, I'm just, you know, do your research. I'm not sure which year that uh, the custom Les Paul uh, did the all Honduran mahogany body, the Honduran cap, the Honduran lower, but they went with uh, a staple and a P90. But where I'm going this, with this Stuart McDonald template here, let me just show you, I'm able to line this whole, these two tailpiece location holes here with these two tailpiece and lo location holes here, if I can do it, where is it? Sorry. Okay. Okay. And then that will guarantee that when I build the gold sparkle, uh, uh, it won't have the tailpiece, but it'll have the ABR1 bridge or the, the Tone Pros roller bridge with the P90s, okay, or filter trons. Now, this is not the filter tron route, but I'll make that decision. In other words, the gold sparkle guitar is not going to have the PAFs. It will have the P90s, okay, uh, be it, again, more along the lines of the Gretsch-esque era. So with those two templates, it's not just a Les Paul. I can build anything I want. So uh, let me uh, look at my notes here briefly. Uh, I'm going to be using, this is the Honda and Mahogany. And I need, I need to end this video here fairly soon because I got to get this thing boxed up and shipped. But I'm going to show you the Honda and Mahogany. This is the, the uh, I'm going to be able to get three necks out of this. One of the necks will be for a 55 uh, Les Paul replica that I'm building right now in the other series, which you guys are probably aware of. Uh, one of the necks will the, the, one of one of the necks that comes out of this billet uh, will go to the uh, 54 uh, 55 Honduran mahogany and and the the neck that does come out of it for that guitar will be the most choice location as far as quarter song but I'm gonna let you hear a little bit about tap tone I'm gonna this is a note. It's Honda and Mahogany, very clear. It's as clear as a bell. And that's why a Les Paul sound from the 50s sounds the way it sounds. 
they originally designed that guitar for jazz, very clear, articulate, melodic playing. And, uh, you know, obviously as, you know, times changed, it got used in a different fashion, but nonetheless, uh, that's why I love working with Andre Mahogany. And I will be uh, working from a, a profile that I designed, which is that's the 17 degrees, as well as uh, Stuart McDonald as well. So I think that should be the end of the video. Let me check my notes, but uh, and let me check the time. All right, that's not bad. We're under uh, under 20 minutes. All right, now let me pause and think about what I what I might need to cover. Uh, I don't think anything other than I'll I'll show this guitar briefly just to give you an idea of what the uh, the crimson guitar will look like. Now this is a 24 fret guitar that I built. It's custom. It's my own personal design, of course. This is this may look like a 59, 58 burst, but uh, it's very far from being an authentic. This is more along the lines of a uh, this is more along the lines of like a 50s uh, a, a jet or penguin, a silver jet, dual jet, the Gretsch penguin. I owned a 1956 authentic uh, silver jet and uh, <clears throat> restored it. It's in Australia now, or it was then when I sold it, but I also owned a 57 6120 Gretsch. So I'm very, very much savvy about the whole Gretsch design, but I wanted it to look like a 59 burst but sound like a Gretsch and it's, it's really cool. It's, it's hits right in the middle as to what it really sounds like, but this will give you an idea of what the crimson guitar will look like. And, uh, most likely we'll go with all nickel and, uh, bear with me. Should be a really uh, dynamic guitar. Uh, both of them will be really cool. I just love, I, I just think the, the, the gold, lends itself more to the whole uh, Gretsch-esque thing. Therefore, the, the B5 Bigsby nickel, uh, possibly even uh, go with uh, Gretsch knobs. Uh, I've done that before on Flying V. It looks really good. So uh, we'll cross that bridge later on. But uh, And also the wiring harness as well. But uh, again, one will have the maple neck and one will have the 100 mahogany neck. And why would I... Why would I do a maple neck uh, with rosewood? Because this right here, this is a 1960 uh, Gretsch double anniversary that uh, was in horrific condition. Uh, I bought it as a basket case. It was damaged really bad, but I've been kind of slowly working on the restoration of this guitar. And uh, I have already played this for about a year and then I broke it back down because the frets I ordered were just too small. They were too thin, so I, I'm going to redo the frets. But whomever did the fret work before did a horrific job, and they just really butchered the, the fretboard. This is true Brazilian rosewood, but that is maple with uh, a rosewood fretboard, very much more along the lines of more, I think, more along the lines of a Gretsch when I think of this, this design here. I know they didn't do that on the 6120, but that's why I want to do the maple neck on the gold sparkle with the rosewood fretboard. And I will do the uh, uh, ebony, Gabon ebony on the 100 mahogany neck lower on the 100 mahogany body for the crimson. So that's my reasoning. And uh, how long have I been wanting to build these two guitars? About 10 years. Uh, I've built guitars very briefly since 2004 on a very professional level. I've shipped them all over the world and I've built a lot of guitars uh, per uh, Robert Benedetto uh, uh, hollow body hand carved jazz guitar specs. And uh, I'm very familiar with the X brace design, the parallel brace design, the scallop design, you name it, a hybrid design. I've built several hybrid guitars. And uh, I'm very, very much confident in that stuff, so in that arena. So uh, can I do it? Absolutely. Uh, how long will it take? Oh, I have no idea. But, but nonetheless, we got time on our hands. Let's build two crimson uh, and gold sparkle uh, flying Vs. And uh, I'm going to sell both of them. And we'll see what happens. All right, uh, let me check the time. We are under 20 minutes, so I can't think of...
anything that I should cover, talked about the hunter and mahogany and the critical importance of why you would want to use that. Um, the Floyd Rose is what it is. I love doing the Floyd Rose, but not on every guitar. And this, get, this one truly is floating. So it, you know, it will actually, um, uh, pitch up as well. well we'll cover that stuff later on but nonetheless i just wanted to get a capturing of this guitar because it's about to be gone and once it's gone i know i'll be sitting there going oh man i wish i had have done this or i wish i had photographed this or i wish i had have shown this in video and you know and once they're gone